Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. We have a fun one for you today. Gonna do a bit of a variety show. We've got so much good stuff. We have tractor modifications, tractor news, tractor products, all sorts of stuff. You're gonna wanna stick around, check it out, and see what we've rounded up. As always, we are brought to you by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy side to side on your tractor, make sure you check out Bora, link down below. All right, so first thing up, let's talk about some cool tractor mods that you tractor owners have made yourself. Some really cool ones. The first one here from Chris Eichmeyer, I think is how you pronounce his name. But if you take a look at this picture, looks like a 1025R with a Curtis cab on it. And he's done some heavy modification to the backside of this. In fact, how he's captioned his post is what a guy makes for his husky, for his dog. And the best I can tell, what he's done is built, custom fabricated, some sort of, boy, it almost looks like it might be heated even. Um, a dog carrier that's on the back side of his cab. Looks like you would have to access it through the cab, maybe jump on the seat, and then climb on into this little all glass carrier on the back side just so his dog can tag along while he's plowing the snow. Next up, we have Will Van Winkle, who repurposed an old utility cart or industrial cart, I guess it looks like, to make a perfect storage unit for all of his tractor attachments. Boy, how many has he got on that cart? It looks like one, two, three, four, at least four attachments on this old repurposed industrial cart. That's a great idea, Will. Next up, we have Doug Kent. You know, I wish I was as handy as some of you guys are, but Doug took some inspiration from a video online and from another product that's out there and used his own fab skills to create a little deck dolly of sorts for his mower deck. You know, those mower decks are a pain to move around. I can see how this could come in so handy. I just wish I had the skills. Now, if you're catching a the theme, these are all on one series tractor. So they're tiny, but they're mighty. And next up, we have a couple of really innovative guys making some redneck jib booms. Not my words, but theirs. First up, we have Jason Cooper, who found a creative way to use his pallet forks and kind of cantilever looks like a four x four or six by six board all the way out there to help put a wall in place. Holy smokes. And that's not the only thing I noticed. He's got some pretty creative counterweight on the backside too. And as I look closer, I realize Jason Cooper yet again, we've got version 2.0 on this redneck jib boom, which, but I'll be honest, this one looks like it took a little more skill, a little more redneck engineering to put together. However, I like those finished results a lot better. Nice work, Jason. And last up, we have Brian Kasky. Now, I love it when guys can repurpose products, repurpose attachments. And Brian here took a piece of 1x12 rubber stripping that he had from work. Didn't want to invest all the cost into a, a snow pusher, a snow plow, something different. But he found a way to modify his landscape rake. It looks like he clamped this piece of rubber stripping right to his landscape rake to make it a almost a squeegee to get that snow cleared off his driveway for the occasional storm. All right, and it's time for your tractor of the week. And we are going to give this to Russell Hansen. Man, alive did Russell make a beautiful... It looks factory made, but this was a homemade cab that he made over 15 years ago, still standing the test of time. Check this baby out. This is going to be found on a Kubota Facebook group, and Russell is, wow, he is just a talented artist. That's all I have to say about it. It looks like reading through the post and through the comments section, he built this cab for his Kubota B2100 by himself in just about a month worth of time. The attention to detail, the quality that went into this. You know, Russell says he wants to do a little bit of bragging, and I don't blame him. That is a work of art right there and something I'd be very proud of. Now, our tractor product of the week is something I happened to stumble across on YouTube and found it to be a very clever design. Now, this does share some resemblance with some of the A-frame style three-point quick hitches of yesteryear that you may have seen on different tractors. Now, not only is this a three-point quick hitch design, but it is going to incorporate a quick connect for the PTO as well. You got to check this thing out and see how it works. Now, the concept behind this looks very intriguing. It does look like there is a lot going on, though. You need to put part of the system, part of the bracketry on your three-point hitch, which is pretty typical. But then you also need to mount the other portion of it to whatever your three-point attachment is. And it appears, I would imagine you have to get that same bracket to put it on all of your three-point attachments. That being said, from what I can tell, it looks like it's going to require for just your PTO-driven attachments, like your rotary tiller, or maybe your, uh, your rototiller, or maybe a rear snowblower, for example, an additional bracket that's going to have the PTO coupling that's on there. But from what I can gather, if you're going to use this with rear PTO attachments, it's going to require you to have some additional hydraulics on the back of your tractor. I'm not sure if any of you out there use this system or not and can verify that, but this seems pretty complex. Now I tried to do a little digging and find out some pricing, and from what I could dig up online, this is not a cheap add-on for your tractor. 
I saw estimates of prices ranging in the thousands, several thousand to up to $8,000. Perhaps that depends on how many adapters you need for how many attachments you have. So while this looks like a very, very helpful solution for you guys on your three point hitch and the rear PTO, I can see this being cost prohibitive for many of you. And now for your tractor news. First up, we have a poop powered tractor. Yes, you heard that right. Poop powered, folks. This is backed by the government, so you know it's a recipe for success. Now, it sounds like this has been brewing for some time, but it's now ready to be pushed out into production. Now, the tractor manufacturer is New Holland, who's always on the cutting edge of innovation and backed by the Advanced Propulsion Center. Hmm, that is just too convenient, isn't it? Now, us tractor owners can be sentimental as much as anybody else, and the same thing can be said for Keith and Patty. Down in Batesville, Indiana, they are on the search and could use your help to find Keith's long lost tractor that he traded in years ago. I've been in the same shoes as Keith and you know what? He regretted trading in that tractor. You know, sometimes you don't know what you got till it's gone. And this happened to Keith back in 1999 when he traded in his tractor for a new one and regretted it from that moment on. So if you check out Patty's Facebook post, she puts a plea out there. If you can help to locate this Massey Ferguson 1105 diesel, they will be eternally grateful. And as of December 27th, 2021, they are still on the search. So what do you say? Let's help them bring that tractor home. Now, this is great to see tractor dealers giving back to the community, trying to pay it forward to the next generation. And Springdale Tractor Company down in Arkansas is doing just that. If you can head on in there and recite the FFA Creed, you're going to win yourself a free jacket. That'll sure come in handy this time of year, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what, this is one of the better deals I've seen come along in quite some time. I think it's time for me to shake the dust off my FFA Creed. And I think it's worth noting that Springdale Tractor Company partnered with Kubota and the Live Like Johnny organization. Read more about that. There's going to be links down below to all these articles so you can browse around. We'll wrap this up with a nice story. There was a gentleman overseas who ended up having a stroke and was stuck in the hospital. His spirits were down, but leave it to the farming community. You know, they put together a procession, got a whole gang of tractor owners over there and did a whole drive by right by his hospital. All these big John Deere's and all sorts of other tractors out there just showing their support for him and a get well message. Leave it to the farming community to look out for each other. We don't get enough positive news out there. You know, I know a lot of you tractor owners are down helping out with cleanup after those horrible tornadoes in Kentucky. So I wanna make sure when I see a good story, I take time to share it. Really quick, if you are in the hunt for a tractor attachment, guess what? Goodworks Tractors, my company, we sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. You gotta check out our website, e-commerce, all right? You can see what you want, you can buy what you want, you can check out, we'll ship it right to you. Now you know we're all about safety here and we are gonna do a little segment on tractor safety every week. And this is to help plant that seed in your head of how quick danger can happen. You gotta check these guys out, we've showed them before, but you're gonna see two tractors turn over here in just a matter of a couple of minutes. Take some lessons from this video. You have three machines at work here. There's just a lot going on, a lot to be distracted by, some uneven terrain. The main thing I see is that loader being carried up high and a severe lack of rear ballast weight. Now something close to pay attention to that I didn't notice before, but the guy up front appears to have his seat belt on and his ROPS bar folded down. Now, if you reference your manual, and I always suggest you do that, I believe it'll tell you if you're going to have your seat belt on, put your ROPS bar up because it's going to help keep you confined within the parameters of your tractor. Now, the gentleman in the back is going to hop off of his tractor as it starts to tip over, and that is the reason you don't want to have your seat belt on if your ROPS bar is folded down. You want to be able to quickly get off of that tractor and out of harm's way, but if you're going to have your seat belt on, you want that roll bar to prevent everything from rolling over further and crushing you, and you stay safe within the confines of the tractor. Now we really don't have any context of this video, what it's really about. It almost seems like they're trying to do this on purpose. Now I would encourage you to watch this video over and over and see all the ways that you can get yourself into a dangerous situation. Having your loader up too high, not having enough ballast weight, operating on uneven terrain, going too fast. There's a lot of lessons to be learned here, so save it and watch it repeatedly. Now it's time for a little bit of tractor fun. It's a great time of year to enjoy the snow, and if you are a remote control enthusiast and you're really going to enjoy this, I don't know for sure if this guy made these or not, but these are pretty incredible. These little remote control tractors with their snow blowers that are actually fully functional. Now he's got a couple of machines here. The first looks to be modeled after a John Deere 7330 with a homemade snow blower on the back. Now, now I have no idea how you can make this all work. Is this battery powered? I'm not really sure, but this is pretty incredible. Now I've got my own ideas going on. I'm envisioning myself putting up a camera and sitting down with a cup of coffee in my living room, watching that little tractor get it done.
Not to be outdone, he's got what we're going to call Big Red here. You can see the smoke flying out of the stack. He's got the strobes, uh, the lights up top. This thing is just decked out a big old snowblower on the back. That just looks like a whole lot of fun. I got to see if he's selling these so I can get one and try it out. After all, with the limited snow we're getting here in Michigan, this might be all I need anymore. Now it's time for a tractor survey, and this one is brought to you by Progressive Farmer. I found this online recently from January 3rd, 2022, so it is pretty recent. And there's quite a few takeaways, so we'll put that link down below to read through it all if you'd like to. Some of the highlights that stuck out to me, I found this interesting. 72% of respondents said that they acquired their tractor from a dealer, 19% from private party, 9% at auction. And get this, 60% of tractors were purchased with cash, with the rest being financed. It goes on to say that the importance of both the dealer and the proximity to a farmer's operation becomes increasingly important with the larger the tractor. And an astounding two thirds of folks said that maintaining a tractor by themselves, hint, hint, right to repair, was a primary consideration in their tractor purchase. Now this survey ranked tractors in three different categories, overall durability, overall customer experience, and overall loyalty. While they did do some additional breakdowns as well, Kubota won overall durability and overall customer experience, well, I think no surprise, John Deere won overall loyalty. Now, an important message, a tractor PSA, if you will. We all know addiction is real in this country, so be careful with your decisions today and how they could affect you tomorrow. I'll tell you one thing's for sure, as a tractor addict myself, all these things are gonna cost you. Hey, and how about a small channel tractor shout out? This week, I'd like to talk about my clutter garage. Ed over there has a Kubota B2601, a lot of attachments. He's always doing a lot of projects, putting out great high quality videos. They're a lot of fun to watch. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you check out his channel, My Cluttered Garage. Just recently, I watched one of his videos where he had a pallet fork fail. He just got a set of pallet forks, wound up binding up his log inside there somehow. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one that kind of stuff happens to. It takes a brave soul to share it. Hey, now listen up. If you want to win some Good Works Tractors merchandise, we're going to scrounge up whatever we can find around here. We're going to hopefully have some more gear sometime in the near future, but we're going to do a little giveaway in these videos. So we're going to give it away to the most liked comment down below. So read through the comments everybody leaves. If they have something funny, something engaging, something informative, give it a like, bump it up the list there. We'll reach out to whoever has that most liked comment and they'll get a little goodie bag. Now I can't possibly come across everything that's on the internet. So if you have something funny, something informative, a cool tractor mod, your own tractor mod, whatever it is, you have something cool to share that you think other folks would enjoy. I'd love to know about it. Send us an email, send us the pictures, the video, the link to the article, whatever it might be, so we can share it in a future video. Now, if you did enjoy today's video, you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And if you are looking for something for your tractor, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. That's it for us today. We'll leave you with these pictures that folks sent in to us. I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.